attention, this is not a drill. The system has discovered six critical flaws that will prevent further guitar progress. Stop playing immediately and wait for further instructions. I bet you know the feeling of being completely stuck on your guitar journey, especially if you're learning and practicing completely by yourself. It took me many years to figure out and to correct my personal technique mistakes and to fill the gaps in my music theory knowledge. Through hundreds of weekly messages from our student community of over 3000 players on Patreon, I finally figured out some of the main guitar progress killers that concern us all. If you don't correct these mistakes and bad habits, it will be very hard to achieve your goals with the instrument. So let's not waste any more time and work on each one right away and see how they all connect with today's final and most important topic. So right away, this is one of the frustrations I keep hearing about the most. I get tons of string noise when I'm playing with distortion. The open strings are always ringing through. I need a fret rep whenever I'm playing solos and so on. That sounds familiar, right? So let's talk about it. One of the biggest problems is the accidental pull-off motion whenever you lift your fingers from the fretboard. So that means if you're not playing for that long or maybe if you never paid attention to it, your fretting hand fingers sometimes generate that kind of unwanted noise when you lift them from the strings either causing a small unwanted pull-off motion like that or sometimes you're simply touching the other strings while you're playing with your fingers. This is a big problem that will prevent your progress sound and also technique wise but it's easy to fix. First of all, make sure to place your fingers on the fretboard like that for maximum control and efficiency. If they are not curled like this, you will probably keep touching the other strings. That doesn't sound too good. And it will also be hard or even impossible to develop that kind of fluid and effortless sounding legato technique. That won't really be possible when you're playing like that. At least I can do it. Second tip. A lot of rock and metal guitar players use way too much force with their fretting hand and we tend to cramp up easily as soon as things get really fast and complex. This was quite a big issue for me as well, especially when I was playing live. As soon as I started reducing pressure with focus on staying more relaxed, I sounded much better and got much less string noise. I promise you will be really surprised by how effortless and fluid you're sounding as soon as you remind yourself not to squeeze the neck like that all the time when you're playing and as soon as you're avoiding unnecessary finger and also wrist movement like that. And one last tip, don't always just mute with your palm to reduce string noise. Of course I do love the sound of those muted notes but you don't want to completely depend on palm muting when it comes to your playing. Obviously palm muting is not the perfect choice for every single song, riff or lick that you want to play. Instead I can really recommend adding some hammer on and pull off workouts to your practice routine. Aside from the obvious technique benefits you will also greatly improve your fretting hand technique in terms of string noise. Here's a great daily workout and exercise for your fingers to reduce your string noise and to work on your muting with your fretting hand. As always you should download the video player along guitar profiles and tabs I made especially for you on patreon.com slash to practice with them. Okay, I hope you're ready for this. This is one of the most important topics ever. It doesn't matter if you see yourself as a rhythm guitar player or as a lead guitar player or if you play jazz or metal. If you don't learn to confidently play in time, you won't make any real progress on your guitar journey. And the solution is not just practice with a metronome, but it's the first step into the right direction. You might not like this sound at first, but it's immensely important to have this timing reference in your practice routine. If you just play exercises randomly and can't check if you're dragging or rushing, you miss out on one of the most important aspects of your daily practice routine. One tip or daily habit that has helped me out a lot with this is 
constantly recording to a click at home. I record new music for myself or for session jobs pretty much every day and I'm making these YouTube videos obviously and that essentially means I have to record to a click every single day. So if you want to avoid an extremely embarrassing first day in the studio Please make sure to record yourself playing or practicing to a click and really analyze your takes and playing. Are you always rushing with certain phrases? Or are your quarter note triplets really in time? Or are you dragging with faster material? Once you get to know your personal shortcomings, it will be much easier to improve on them. So in case you want to work on that from now on, which we all should do more, I have another really cool timing workout for your practice routine. You probably missed this really cool workout, it didn't get a lot of views when I posted it originally. Because, say it with me, still around 70% of you guys and girls are not subscribed to this channel. Yes, I swear I'm not making this number up and you keep missing tons of really helpful exercises like that. So make sure to join us today to become a real part of our YouTube Shred community. I know, I know, you're probably a bit scared of music theory. <laughs> a lot of players even get defensive about it, claiming that theory hurts your natural sound and creativity. In my personal experience over the last 15 years of playing, this could not be farther from the truth. You need at least a basic understanding of theory to know which scales to use for your guitar solos, to know which chords are in a key for your songwriting. It's so frustrating to constantly feel stuck in the same boring old scale shapes and it will kill your progress at one point if you don't develop some fundamental music theory skills. Please trust me on this, it's not that bad. Here's a suggested easy quickly summarized roadmap for you. If I could start again with all this, I would start with learning the notes on my fretboard. I recently even posted a whole course on fretboard visualization and memorization for all students on Patreon. Next you can study the intervals, their names and sound, so you won't be confused anymore when somebody says scary words like minor third or major seventh. Once again, all of this really isn't as bad as it sounds at the beginning. Next you can learn about chord and scale theory. In this step you will learn how scales are built and how they are all connected, how chords are constructed and which chords are in a key. With this basic foundation you can tackle pretty much any advanced music theory topic in the future. Of course you don't have to become a full-on jazz music theory super nerd. But I can guarantee you, without these fundamentals, you will be stuck at some point and this absolutely kills your progress both as a guitar player and as a musician in general. Alright, as you can probably tell by now, this is one of my absolute favorite topics. And that's for a reason. I was at a point a couple of years ago where I felt completely stuck with my own technique. I could play some really cool stuff and I was working professionally on big tours and album productions already, but I felt like I was limited and held back by my technique. Up to that point I actually thought I was working on technique quite a lot since I was constantly practicing alternate picking, sweep picking, tapping and all of that crazy stuff. But I wasn't working and improving on much more important topics like how I'm holding my pick, how my fretting hand fingers are touching the strings while I'm playing, how my fretting hand wrist is moving or not moving when I'm playing, of course how my pinky finger is bending away from the fretboard uncontrolled like that constantly, how my picking angle needs to change for certain string transitions and if I'm working with my wrist or with my full arm. And those are of course just some really quick and basic topics. So once I was questioning all of this and I started experimenting with different approaches, I was totally hooked. First I got my pinky finger under control with exercises like that. Up next I was working on my picking technique, closing my hands and working with my wrist instead of my full arm. That's exactly what we discussed in last week's video and exercises like that one really helped me with that. So working and practicing like this really unlocked my wrist and that improved my sound so much. And then I worked on my fretting hand technique, my fingers and my wrist angle some more with legato exercises. This of course corrected my finger positioning, it also reduced the string noise, like we discussed in the first chapter of today's video. And I also stopped moving my wrist excessively like that, which was also quite a problem. 
to make a long story short, I stopped seeing technique as many small topics like alternate picking or sweep picking and started to see the bigger picture. How am I actually holding the guitar? How are my fretting hand fingers working? Where are the weaknesses with my picking technique? And so on. So if you feel right now that your technique is holding you back, just make a list of all the aspects you want to improve and actively work on this in your practice routine. Yes, you might be surprised, sound is extremely important for your guitar progress as well. Great tone is up to debate, of course, and we all prefer different amps, caps or effect combinations. But what is not up for discussion is that too much gain will make it hard for you to identify your shortcomings. This is a bad habit I see with a lot of students. If you practice or record with gain set to 11 at all times, you will have a really bad day as soon as your producer or sound engineer tells you to dial it back. Of course, I experienced this myself and it really hurts, but we have to admit it, hiding behind massive amounts of gain and distortion is one of the big guitar progress killers as well. Here's how I used to practice all the time. That's a cool kind of sound, but when I'm practicing, this is how it sounds like right now. I really want to be able to hear all of these inconsistencies with my playing. This really gets me prepared for studio jobs or for live performances, so that there are hopefully no bad surprises. So I can really recommend trying out a clean sound or just less effects in your next practice routine. It might hurt a bit in the beginning since you thought you sound better and more accomplished already. At least that's how I felt like when I turned down the gain for the very first time. But in the long run, this will really help with cleaning up your playing and technique and you will make much faster and better progress this way. So how do all previously discussed bad habits connect and potentially kill your guitar progress? In your daily practice routine, of course. We talked about routines a lot on this channel and if you're subscribed and part of our awesome community here, you know that I love to work with practice plans and I also love recommending this system. But one bad habit or topic I didn't mention yet is challenging yourself accordingly with this. We all hate to sound bad and it's not a good feeling to fail, especially with something you're so passionate about. But this is absolutely necessary to get better. Simply put, if you sound absolutely amazing when you're practicing every day, you're doing something wrong. If you sound perfect practicing your live set, preparing for a gig, that's a great thing. You will have an awesome show, great job. But if you sound great and absolutely flawless with your guitar technique and theory workouts every single day, chances are you're not really challenging yourself enough. You absolutely want to struggle and fail every single day. This is exactly what will make you better. So in case you need help with setting up your personal perfect practice routine, you can always hit me up on Patreon. All right, thanks so much for watching today's episode all the way until the end. Please let me know about your biggest progress killer in the comments down below. And please also let me know in case I forgot some bad habits that I should have added to this list. Maybe we can do this again in the future. As always, your reward for watching this video until the end is today's random German word, Erdgeschoss. That's not a dangerous military weapon, it actually means first floor or ground floor. Make sure to comment this word down below to confuse everybody who didn't watch this video until the end. Subscribe to stay updated, leave a like in case you enjoyed and see you next time. Bye bye.